This is the second lecture um, from the amine um, chemistry. And um, at this point, um, I left off last time um, kind of rushed um, describing the um, chemistry of vision. And um, at this point, um, you should be able to many of the uh, four-row reactions. And I also want you to make sure in the book, you could do 20.16 and 20.22. So once you know the overall reaction and you feel comfortable uh, giving me the products of amines and enamines, depending on whether you have a primary or secondary amine, um, now we are ready to um, look at mechanisms and be able to answer questions such as this, which is amine formation is optimal at pH of four to five. And the question is why is that the case. All right, so we'll only be able to answer this after looking at the mechanism. So we'll get back to that question. But, at, but now uh, what I want to do is um, go over the mechanism of how amines and enamines are formed. Um, that's in the second, uh, this sheet here. And um, just like, it's, it's going to look very similar to uh, acetal formation. Um, but let's go over um, a step at a time and um, hopefully it will make sense to you. All right. So um, we have aldehyde or ketone and uh, we have an amine. So because we're talking about amine formation, we have a primary amine. Amines are in general basic compounds and at the same time nucleophilic, all right? So the, the nitrogen lone pair is going to be, to be attracted to the carbon of the carbonyl, and it's going to attack the carbon of the carbonyl, and then that's gonna cause the double bond O to um, open up and become a single bond, correct? Then uh, what you're gonna have is an intermediate a dipolar intermediate in which you have the um, oxygen with the negative charge and a nitrogen uh, with now a positive charge because it's used a lone pair and it's, it's got four bonds attached to it so it has a, a plus charge. It's not going to stay um, long at, in this uh, stage but this O minus is going to grab one of the protons, um, the extra proton on the nitrogen, and form this OH. All right, so now this amino alcohol is a neutral species, it's an intermediate. And what has to happen, you know, that water, um, sorry, the water, so this is the neutral amino alcohol, um, you know, that water has to form and in here in order for it to leave because OH is not a good leaving group. So the alcohol um, is going to grab a, a proton from the acid catalyst and it's going to form this, uh, let me emphasize the plus charge on the oxygen. So this is water. And what's going to happen then is the lone pair on the nitrogen is going to push um, the water out. All right, and then this minus water means the water has formed at that point. Um, so at this point, what you have is an imenium ion because it's got the four bonds with the uh, plus charge. And the extra proton that's on the nitrogen is going to be extracted to uh, reform the, um, the acid catalyst and giving back the lone pair to form the enine. And um, obviously you're going to have um, ENZ isomer of this and notice the, um, the acid being regenerated. So this is where the water um, gets extruded from the, um, the protonated amino alcohol um, and that's the byproduct all right so that's the mechanism of imine formation now let's look at the question of why um, 
this reaction is best carried out in our, our pH of uh, 4 to 5. All right, so if you look at the reaction rate, Um, versus the pH, All right? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So between um, four and five, the reaction rate is uh, highest, and then it goes down again as the uh, pH increases. All right. So in other words, the optimum pH uh, is between four and five, and the question is why. Why is the rate highest at this pH, all right? So let's look at um, pH lower than 4 to 5. So when the reaction is run under um, pretty much acidic conditions, look at what is not going to happen. I mean, this pH problem comes from the fact that amine group, the amino group is basic, like I said. So at low pH, in which a uh, lot of um, acid is around, the amine is going to um, react with the, uh, with the acid in an acid-base reaction. So this is going to serve as base. This is acid. So rather than doing the uh, nucleophilic attack of the carbonyl, which it's supposed to, it's now... Um, kind of getting sidetracked because there are a lot of acid around and it's going to prefer to do an acid base reaction and in that case what you're going to form is an ammonium um, salt which is not nucleophilic right because it no longer has the lone pair and in fact is is, is now electrophilic so um, that's the problem if you run the reaction at a really low pH, all right? Um, at the same time, if you run at a high pH, then we have a problem in the second step, right? So this is, so this is the first step, the nucleophilic attack, all right? That won't happen if it's under two acidic condition. But the second step, which is the uh, amino alcohol, now has to be protonated and form the water so that it leaks. So if we have reactions going on at a real high pH, then we don't have um, proton around. So that second step of uh, amino alcohol grabbing the proton is not possible. at high pH because a high pH means that you don't have much acid around, right? So there's a, a sweet spot which is 4 to 5 in which you have um, enough proton around um, to do the second step to protonate it but um, it's not really, really low pH. It doesn't have abundant of abundance of the uh, hydronium ion in, in that it will protonate all the um, primary amines. So that is the reason why this is the optimum pH where the reaction it goes the furthest. So notice in this reaction mechanism though, just like in acetal formation, the, um, all the steps are reversible. So in other words, um, when, if you want to um, make the a reaction go backwards, so going back to your um, last page note, if you want to go backwards, you just have to use a lot of water um, to do a hydrolysis, and then in that case, you get a carbon ion and an amine. All right. Now let's look at the um, enamine formation uh, mechanism. Now, in enamine formation, um, it's going to be exactly like the, um, the first couple of steps are going to be exactly the same. And then at the end, when it forms the enamine, that's where it's going to be um, different. So initially, the lone pair on the nitrogen of the secondary amine is going to be attracted to the electrophilic carbon. So it does the same thing. So then we have um, oxygen 
with the negative charge and it's now made a, a bond with the nitrogen and the nitrogen is going to be plus charged uh, so it formed this pond and then it's going to the oxygen O minus is going to grab the proton give back the lone pair so there's the lone pair on the nitrogen and notice the um, hydrogen has transferred over to the oxygen now right so here's the uh, neutral intermediate and then here you are going to do the same thing which is um, grab a proton from the acid so now this is going to have an extra hydrogen so therefore that's going to be protonated um, almost there as water and then the lone pair is going to go and drive off the water so it forms an aluminium ion just like you've seen before this plus charged species with the nitrogen and a double bond is not stable so what happens is it will need to um, grab so the uh, water will come and grab this um, proton next door to this aluminium ion and then that's going to cause the C double bond C to form that's going to give the lone pair back to the nitrogen so you see that right here and that's how the enamine is formed okay so uh, just like we saw before in the overall reaction we had um we talked about this 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 proton is what is removed to form be able to form the double bond and notice the water is the byproduct so once again if you want to do a hydrolysis of enamine you add a lot of water to push the equilibrium to the left and what you get back is the carbonyl and the secondary amine all right so um, please review these um mechanisms over and over again and see if you could do um, problems like this 20.15 a and b and 20.21 and be able to draw these mechanisms all right and that concludes this lecture